God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. How you doing? This is Robert Jenkins. It is a Tuesday afternoon, 531, 532. I think I'm a minute or two minutes late today. I do apologize for that. As always, me and my wife take out the time to say thank you. We appreciate all of your support and loyalty. Uh, we had some uh, things going on in the house yesterday and I wasn't able to come on. So I do apologize for that. Uh, I try to come on as, as faithful as possible. And yesterday was not able to do that. Good to see you, Tony. God bless everybody. God bless you, Mark. So as always, we ask you to share this on your page. And we ask you to invite people out Monday through Fridays, five days out of a week. Um, we are on. Uh, good to see you, Sonny. Good to see you, Sylvia. God bless everybody today. So please share this on your page and also invite people out uh, for a word from the Lord. Today is a very, 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 I cannot put it enough, uh, sensitive uh, teaching. Good to see you, Adam. God bless you, man. God bless you, son. Um, it's a very sensitive issue. I'm dealing with sexual abuse. Uh, I'm going to deal with it from a lot of aspects. I got a lot of things to say to you, uh, but I want you to be prayerful. I need you to really be prayerful. Uh, I've been praying. This is a burden that's been on me for a lot, about two weeks, and it's a very, very, very heavy burden. Um, I don't even know why. You know, I am at the place. It's a place of tears, but I'm feeling somebody. Somebody wants to be free from sexual abuse. You've been carrying it for years. You haven't told anybody, and it's messing with your life and messing with um, maybe your family. I don't know all the details of it. But I feel you. And when I say I feel you, <clears throat> I mean, I can almost call out your name. So I'm praying. I need those who are uh, watching today. I need you to be praying with me. If you know anyone that has been sexually abused, whether it's a male or female, I need you to tell them, get them on this teaching this week, starting today. And let's be free from these things. I'm going to share a lot of things in my life that I believe happened to me. I'm going to be very transparent. Uh, the whole purpose of this teaching is to free us so that you can be all that you need to be. So I'm going to touch on a lot of different things. So I need you to be prayerful. Uh, those that are making comments, you know, I love comments. My wife is always on. But make sure your comments are in tune with the Spirit of God. Make sure it's God telling you to put these commas up. Don't just put commas up just to put them up because I believe we need to do surgery today. So I need you to really be focused and hear God because I don't want the devil to come in and distract these people and we say something carnal or whatever the case may be. I am so, 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 so serious because if you've never been molested or raped, uh, then you may not understand the seriousness of this, okay? So this is so important that we do this. So I'm gonna go into prayer and we're going to talk about some things, okay? Father, we bless your name for who you are. We thank you for this very hour. God, I'm giving you back what you gave me. You put this burden on me. Lord, I ask you to just help us walk through this. We know that you are with us. We know that you love us. Lord, I ask you to allow the freedom of, of the heart to be expressed today. Somebody needs to cry. Somebody needs to say, I'm sorry. Somebody needs to say, Lord, forgive me. Somebody needs to know that you love them like you never loved them before. Someone needs their identity revealed. Father, as we pull on your virtue today for divine healing, we ask you to do it. And we touch and agree with all those who are going to be free for the first time. We, we touch and agree with all those who may have to sit down with their father and mother and discuss some things. We, we, we pray for that, Lord. And you be in the midst of these conversations. And, and don't allow us to relapse. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Good to see so people, so many people out. God bless you, God bless you. Captain Marge, good to see you. Sheldon, God bless you. Uh, we're talking about spiritual abuse, or really we're talking about sexual abuse, and I titled it, Who Touched Me? So allow me to teach today, um, and just allow me to share some things with you. Most of us have been touched. Most of us have been touched. Um, maybe out of two women in my life, maybe two women in my life that I have either been involved with or have had some form of conversation, maybe two. And I would say out of the thousands, I've, I've probably met over 20,000 people in my lifetime, if not more. And I say maybe two out of that experience 
have not been molested. Being sexual molested uh, by a man or by a woman or by many, I've met women who have been gang raped, is a very devastating thing. And the first thing I want to say to you is that you got to let the guilt and the shame go. And I'm going to show you how to walk that out because sometimes, God, I feel the anointing. Sometimes people tell you to get over it, to move on, but they have never been victimized. Uh, to move on, to get over it, sometimes it's not easy to do because I don't even know what it looks like. I don't know what it looks like to to erase. There's There is things that can happen to you in a matter of seconds that you'll never forget for a lifetime. I'm praying. It, it is possible to be healed. It is possible to be delivered. But there's some steps. And the first step is, we and, and we pray for the Holy Ghost. And this, this is a very serious teaching today. That it help you take off the shame and take off the guilt. Okay? Take off the shame and take off the guilt. Because a lot of times we feel like it's our fault. And I'm going to share them. Many of my testimonies today, I've been in situations where I should have been raped. And, I, and when I say this, I've been in a situation where I should have been raped by a man. And I've been in a situation where I should have been raped by, a woman, uh, by women. I've been in both of those situations. Very close, tight. Uh, and I was telling my wife the other day, and, and, and I don't have any secrets. Uh, but I remember my mother exposed me. Um, I was playing drums for a very, very famous uh, gospel artist at one time. And he so-called wanted to take me out of town and let me sign these contracts and be a large drummer all over the world. And uh, when we got to the place, it was kind of late. And he made a statement to me. And I'm being transparent, so please don't take these things that I'm saying to you that happened many, many years ago and judge my character. But I'm saying them because I want somebody else to be free. And sometimes you have to tell your story for somebody else's story to be told. But I remember um, being in this place and my mother released me and I was maybe maybe 17. So i tell you how long ago. I'll be 54. So I was... Um, about 17 years old, my mother released me to this person and knew nothing about it. And that's, and that's one of the reasons a lot of times that we find ourselves in sexual abuse because we didn't have proper parenting. We didn't have people who knew how to protect our anointing. And there's some people who've been victimized because they didn't have the right person to protect their anointing. Sometimes we let children go to church and you have no idea who that Sunday school teacher is. You have no idea who's back there with those kids and you release them to people that will damage their souls forever without the grace of God. A lot of times babysitters that we don't really know much about, but they are affordable. And sometimes what didn't cost you much money costs you much more money later on for your children to get counseling. So this happens. So my mother released me and I don't know why my mother released me. Um, I, I, like, I, I say a lot of things about my family. My family was very dysfunctional. There was a whole lot of God, and there was a whole lot of good, and there was a whole lot of devil, and there was a whole lot of bad. But she released me to this young man. Uh, uh, so we went out of town, and when we got there, it was late, and he said, you know, somebody's house. I didn't even know the person. I'm 17 years old. I'm miles and miles away. And um, there was only one bed at the time. He says one bed, and, and I had never had any sexual experience at that time at all with a woman or with a man. And uh, I was very green, as they, as they say, my wife used that word, very green, didn't know much. And uh, But I knew that I wasn't gay. So I said, no problem. You, you sleep on one side, I sleep on the other side. And uh, I remember him uh, in the middle of the night taking his hand and putting it in my private space. And I moved his hand out of the way. And I was so nervous. I was so nervous at the age of 17. This is the first encounter that I had with a man trying to be attracted to me. And I had no idea. I was away from home. I had no money to get home. I don't even think I had driver's license. Um, but I was in this crazy environment. So I moved this hand off. And I figured the best thing to do is to move this man's hand off me. And then I remember uh, it wasn't too long that he did it again. And then I moved it off again. And I said, if you touch me again, I'm going to kill you. But I was shaking in my spirit. I was shaking in my spirit. And I want to be very transparent. I want to share with you because there's some men that would never tell you what happened to them. But um, this is why they drink so much or smoke so much or have so much sex or work themselves to deaths or so tied into religion they can't even love their wives because things touch us. And when things touch us, it can shape our identity. And sometimes we hide from it. So I'm, so I'm sharing my story and being transparent so somebody else can be free. Uh, God has freed me from the shame and the guilt of it so I can tell you. 
So I said I was going to kill him. Now, I was nervous because I was in a bad situation. I was in a very, very bad situation. But the other part that I was mad at because it made me question my manhood, even though nothing sexual went down. But it made me question my manhood because I, I said to myself, if I was a real man, I should have stabbed him. I said to myself, if I was a real man, I should kill him because he touched me. This man put his hands on my privacy and he touched me. Now, thank God that situation, all it was, was a hand touch and he moved away. But I had to deal with uh, being touched by a man. I had to deal with my emotions of why am I not angry? Why am I not a killer? Why don't I hate men? All these things. But I was touched. And that's real That's real talk. Now, I remember uh, going to the um, years later, years later, maybe about uh, maybe about four or five years ago, I went to see a psychologist and I began to share with the psychologist uh, different things that I had been through in my childhood. Uh, most of you, if you know my story, I talked about how my mother married a man who struggled uh, with homosexuality. So homosexuality was in my life very, very strong. And here again, as a child, I'm in these bad environments. Uh, I grew up in the gospel industry. I played for the major gospel industry. And if you know anything about the gospel industry, it, 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 is, it, is, it is overloaded with homosexuality sexuality is overloaded with with lesbians so I I couldn't get away from it my father who licensed me in the minister uh, was he struggled with homosexuality I remember driving him to do a revival and he wanted me to drive him to do a revival and I remember the same kind of thing happened again he put his hand on my leg and I'm driving and at that time I was a little more, a little older and I wanted to kill him too and I moved his hand I said maybe touch me again you're not gonna make it to the revival but those type of things because this was the same man who gave me license. This was the same man who I had so much respect for in God, but he had homosexual struggles, see? And this happened, so men are touched. Now, I'm just sharing with you mine, because if you're in the music industry and you're in the preaching industry, you're going to have to run across it. It's impossible to be in the gospel industry and not run into homosexuality. And a lot of people that you see that you may criticize, and we have a tendency um to criticize people and we call them gay and we call them all these names and we really don't have any love for them but you have no idea who touched them you have no idea now I thank God for um, that, that God saved me from that now I believe that I was touched I'm sharing this with you. I believe that I was touched. I do not remember the situation. I, I can't remember the act. I don't remember no one doing something to me. That I, but I do believe that I was touched. I believe that for various reasons. I'm going to show you. I'm going to talk to you about things that happen in your life that somebody touched you somewhere. And such touch don't have to be all the way sexual. It don't have to always be a penetration. But it can be a legal touch from a man that you become comfortable with. He made you comfortable with it. Okay, so this is so important. So, I, but I believe that I, I had some problems physically in my body. I had to go to the doctor, and the doctor said somebody had touched me. Now I don't remember the act itself, but according to the doctor, that I had been touched. So, I, so I want. So I'm very transparent today because I want to help people that uh, this happens. And I don't know if it was a family member. I don't know if it was friends of my stepfather. I don't even know. And I don't. I'm not blaming no one for it because I can't remember the act. But I, but I did accept in my mind, based upon my behavior, my over, over, and at one time, and I thank God he healed me from that, at one time I was so sexually active, it was beyond normal. And I don't know if I was trying to prove to myself that I was straight. I don't know what it was. We, we, can, we can make up excuses. Uh, I don't know. I'm not a psychologist in that area. But I do know that I have been touched. Okay, I do know that. So, so I'm saying that to you, and that was on the male side. Now, I've also been touched by the female side. I remember being at a church, and uh, the drums was was over a pulpit at this particular church. You know, they used to have baptism pools, and they had close it up, and the drums sat over that, so you walk behind the church. And I remember walking behind the church, and the and the organist at the time, she was a lady. She threw me in the bathroom, and um, and she shut the door, and she says she's gonna give me some, and she grabbed me. I remember being touched that way. So we can be touched. I remember my first real sexual experience with a woman. Uh, she was at least 30 years older than me. I was dating women 50 when I was 20. Uh, 
So I remember, and she, if we just, I don't want to be not too graphic, but she turned me out in a lot of ways, way beyond my mind. And these things can shape your identity. So there's all type of form of sexual abuse. And I'm just giving you my transparency to let you know I understand it at one level. Now, I don't know what it is uh, to be tied down and someone to force themselves on you. I can imagine that. And when I'm speaking to you, I don't think that everybody's in church that everybody who got a collar behind her on their neck and everybody who got a Bible is saved and sanctified. There are some young women, and I've talked to so many men who have been touched by their father. I have talked to pastors who have been touched by their uh, uh, grandfather or touched by their stepfather down in the basement. This thing is real. And I want to show you that you have to come out of the closet. It can make you an introvert. And I'm going to go over the signs when your children have been touched or when a man has been touched and when a has been there are certain signs because somebody touched us and I'm pulling this from the scripture uh, Mark chapter 5 uh, verse 25 when a woman with the issue of blood and she touched the, the all she touched was the hem of, of, of Jesus garment and she and, and Jesus said to her or said to them who has touched me and and when he looked around to see this, uh, she had pulled the virtue she didn't even touch him she touched the hem but in touching the hem she touched him. Okay, and she pulled the virtue. If if a touch can pull virtue uh, legally, then a touch could pull virtue illegally. And sometimes we can never be the man that we need to be because we've been touched and we've never been told. I, I'm going to talk about, I don't know what day, but I'm going to talk about the whole Antoine Fisher story and what really happened in that story and how he was touched. There's another movie that I want you to watch. I want you to watch some movies this week. I want you to watch the Antoine Fisher story and I want you to watch also a movie called Nuts. This is by Barbara Streisand. And she talked about in this movie how she was touched by her father and her father kind of like introduced prostitution to her because when she would take baths he would sli slide money un underneath the door and when he slide money underneath the door she would let him in the bathroom and he would go ahead and, and molest her and do things to her so she learned the value of money through her sexuality so there's a lot of things that happen that goes on that people are touched by that you don't understand why they are and people have told me seem like you came from a foster care or, or you came from a shelter because you're sheltered well if you ever been touched in any type of form these things happen to you so i want to deal with that i want to relate i want to let you know that i can relate to you i can feel you i'm not ashamed but i want you to come out the closet i want you to come out of the closet of that type of closet and begin to talk about it because your mother and there are so many people that are watching today that their mother have no idea that they ever been molested or ever been raped they're, they're husbands who've been married to their wives and you wonder why your wives are not sexual in bed and you wonder why you know she loves you but there's some reason why she can't totally release it's because she's been touched somewhere. There's some men who you may feel like, is he gay? What's wrong with him? He's not over-sexual or what, why is his sexual peak not where it needs to be? It's because he's been touched. And this is a real reality. And we can't shout over this. We can't speak in tongues over this. We can't just quote quote scripture. We have to deal with all these things that may shape us. Okay? So I'm dealing with that and that's a reality. And if you've ever been there, you want someone to talk to. You want someone to cry with. You want somebody to understand. And sometime in church, we don't deal with these issues. Okay? Or these issues. Issues. So I want to talk about that. So the first point I want to talk about today is that there is a such thing as a legal touch. A touch is very powerful. Eve talked about it. A lot of preachers, they criticize Eve when she says, uh, neither shall you touch it. Well, you couldn't get to that apple or whatever that fruit may have been if you don't touch it. And preachers say she added to the text, which I don't believe she added to the text. I believe she understood the text in a clearer way. And sometimes the text is layered. I think she gave us a layer when she said, neither shall you touch it. Because when you touch something, you send, there are, are, are signals in your fingers. There, there, there are certain signals in your fingers. And whenever you touch something, you leave. I wrote a poem years ago called Fingerprints on Your Soul. And somebody can leave fingerprints on your soul to the point they always can trace it and they'll even tell you that people who are molest children or people who rape people they there's a pheromone that is released when you have been raped or you are in a sense a predator or could be raped because there are certain things that you release see when someone has touched you illegally and there is a legal touch and everybody who hugs you in church is not right okay and I'm dealing with it because you'll be surprised at the people who's been hurt by men of God or women of God right in the house of God Okay, and we can we can criticize the, the entertainment. We can say there's homosexuality. It's too much homosexuality uh, in the gospel industry. But you don't know when that little boy 
who's attracted to that artist at the age of 9 and 10, 10 and he can sing real good and the artist manipulated him and became comfortable and made him feel like that he loved him and that he understood him. In other words, he nurtured him into a bad behavior and took advantage of him. And once you've been touched by something, it can shape you. This is what David really meant when he said, I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. There's some shaping going on. Even if you study the prodigal son, and I don't want to go too deep into the text, but the Bible talks about he joined himself to a citizen. When well, using in the scripture, only time the word join is mentioned is when it is something sexual. So who joins himself unto a harlot becomes a harlot also. So usually when the word join is in the Bible, it refers to something sexually of one own. So for it to say that the prodigal son joined himself into a citizen is not just that he got hired there. Okay, there were some things that went on that woke him up to some situations. And we understand he has a righteous living and he wasted money, but there are some other things that go on. And we don't deal with there are certain people who tie. You can have a soul tie with your pastor as a woman and have never slept with your pastor physically, but you did sleep with him mentally. And these things go on and, and, and they tie and they can touch you. And, and this can be uh, very vulnerable that you may not start out uh, 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 in a physical, but next thing you know, you in bed with your pastor. Next thing you know, you in bed with leaders. This goes on and on and on and on. I, I'm not talking about something that I heard. I'm talking about something that I lived. Okay, I understand this. I have been at church. I've been invited to churches and the pastor literally uh, basically let us know that his daughters is available. I know that may be hard to digest, but it's real. Okay. And there's a lot of churches you can go to and you can pick out the woman that will sleep with you just because you are a preacher. This is real talk. And there are a lot of people who go to these churches, so-called apostles and evangelists and pastors and teachers, and they literally molest your boys. They literally touch them illegally in a way to bring a certain touch that make them children want to be with them all the time. So I'm going to talk about this, and this is real talk. But I want you to know, uh, first, before I go real deep today, that I feel you. And, and, I, and, and I'm crying with you. I, I feel your burden. I don't even know your name. And I, I think I know some people's name. But I, I, all of you, I don't know your name. But let me tell you this. It's time to talk. How long are you going to carry that guilt? How long are you going to carry that shame? How long are you going to carry that secret? Okay? And this is for young men as well as young ladies. This is for older men as well. And people can carry this for 22 years. I talked to a person the other day. And they have been married for 22 years. But the man couldn't deal with it no more, that he had been touched and that he believed that he was gay. He had been married to him for 22 years and have kids. There's a guy who wrote a book and he was on Oprah about the down low. We criticize the men is on down low. But nobody deals with the pain of being taken advantage of or the first touch. OK, this is real talk. So we have to deal with illegal touches and be aware of touches. Even Paul writes about that it's better for a man not to touch a woman. And he's not talking about a, just a physical touch. He's talking about a touch with a passion and a desire. OK, and these things go on and our children are being touched. And rather you may think, my God, what is he preaching about? Let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about you're sending your kids to school and somebody wants to touch your daughter. Okay, somebody wants to touch your son. You have family members. Everybody has family members. You have perversion in your family. You have homosexuality in your family. You have lesbian in your family. You don't know when you're leaving your kids and you and your you and your husband just going out to the movies. But when you come back, you look in your child's eyes and something happened. I remember dating. I'm just giving you. I'm being transparent today. I'm over my life. I remember uh, dating this young lady, and I had brought her over, and she had a young girl at that time. She had a daughter, and I brought her daughter over, and I told my brother. Uh, we're going to run to the store. We'll be right back. Uh, she's upstairs playing. Okay, we'll be right back. And when I came back, her daughter was no longer the same. My brother had a friend over the house, and he molested her while we were going to the store. You don't understand the devastation. I'm just, I got a girlfriend. She, she has a young girl. I met somebody with a baby. But I never intend to bring the young girl to my house. And then my brother's friend that I didn't know had perversion in his, he was young. My brother's just four years younger than me. He was young, but he molested this girl. When we picked this girl and brought her home, she told her mother that this boy had pulled her pants down and had did some things to her. Now, he's, he, did, he tried to deny it, but we went to the counseling. They said she had been touched. And to this day, she's struggling with her, with her identity. Some, when I went home, and I haven't been home in a long time, but the last time I think I went home, or maybe before that, she had her hair cut, and I didn't know if she wanted to look like a boy or look like a girl. But I know and she know that I'm struggling with my identity. Do I want to be a boy or do I want to be a girl? Because I was born a girl, 
because I was touched. And, and this touch can make you, it can pull something out of you. Me and my wife was talking about the message. And sometimes when a person violates you and takes something from you, what happens is they take the virtue of that essence. Let's say, for instance, that I was molested. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Captain Marge. She said her family ignored it for years. See, people look, and that's what I want. I want people to come out and begin to give testimony because you're not the only one that was a victim of that. But I, but I remember, you know, the young girl, she told that. She told that story. She had been touched. And I was, I was going to say something else. Uh, I know the Holy Spirit will bring it back to me. But these things happen. Okay? These things happen. So she was touched. And she didn't, she, the young girl was in line, but she, she didn't know her identity. And sometimes you don't know your identity. You can be lost in it. Okay? So Holy Ghost, bring that thought back to me that I was about to say. I was about to say something. Um, but this is very key. And a lot of us have experienced this. Okay, have experienced this illegal touch and it'll leave fingerprints on your mind. And you may never uh, be able to enjoy the Lord, the fullness, because you live with his guilt. Okay, illegal touch. The next thing I want to talk about is no more secrets. Um, I, you, man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Um, I, want, I want God to bring that back to me because it was a very powerful point. But but no more secrets. Uh, we hide things. We we can't tell everybody. And this is a sad thing that you can't you can't tell everybody when you've been sexually abused, especially by ministers, especially by an uncle, uh, uh, especially by a nephew, family members, or especially by a brother or by a sister. But I'm telling you that God wants you to come out of the closet. I'm telling you that God loves you. I'm telling you that God has forgiven you. I'm telling you that I want you to forgive yourself. And I'm telling you that you'll never be able to walk in the fullness that you call that you call to if you keep these secrets. So we have, and I was going to title it No More Secrets, but we're going to go through a lot of things that I want to deal with here. But this woman with the issue of blood, she, there, there it is, okay. She she pulled the virtue out of Jesus. And, and you can pull the virtue. That's what I was going to say. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody can touch you illegally. Somebody can rape you. Say, say somebody raped me. And they rob me of, of, of me feeling like a man. When they do that to me, they can take the virtue of a man from me. So I, I don't feel like a man. So now, now listen to me very carefully. It's a very powerful point. So now what I am, I am now attracted to men. Not because I am gay. But because they have the virtue of manhood in them. And I like it because I was raped. Because I was robbed. Are you hearing me? Okay, I'll say it again. If I was raped by a man and he rapes me, my conscience, I can receive a rape as if I was violated and something was stole from me. And say, for instance, I, 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 I question my manhood now because I was raped. So all of a sudden now, the, the longing for, for manhood is in me because I feel like I've been robbed from me. So now I am attracted to men. Not to be gay, not to marry them, but they hold the virtue of my manhood in them. I remember, and I, that's what I told you, I've been touched. I don't know exactly what happened, but I know I've been touched. And it may have been more than once because I, I, I suffered with psychological problems in my identity. Uh, but a lot of it had to do with being touched in, in my environment. I couldn't get away from the homosexual and the lesbian, which really taught me so much because one of my ministry is to help men understand their identity. I can love you while you're gay and love you out of that. I can love you and have the patience that it may take to pull that rule out. I understand. There's a lot of people who watch me that we, I have a... God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I have a clinging to because I know your issue. I can spot it. I was raised by this spirit. Raised by it. I, I said raised by it. I was raised by so many demonic things that taught me how to recognize demonic activity. Okay? But if that happens to you, and I remember me, I used to hope a man would wrestle me. I love the wrestle. I used to love the fight. Uh, I love the wrestle. And in that, I wanted, and it wasn't that I wanted to be gay, but there was something about the touch of a man that I would feel like a man. I wanted to build houses. I wanted to do what my father did because I felt like my father was a man. So even today, I struggle if it's something wrong with the house and my wife trying to get somebody else to do it or whatever and I really don't know what I'm doing but
but I want to do it because it violates the man that I feel like I got robbed out of. Or you understand what I'm saying? So a lot of men, you are attracted to other men because you've been robbed and you've been touched. And what happens is if you're not careful, that attraction for the strip of the man, what, what the devil will take advantage of it and then have you in situations. And now once you've been touched sexually, there is something that is good about sex, period. Anytime you uh, taste pleasure before you taste purpose, you may not do things out of purpose anymore. So a lot of men been taken advantage of because there was longing for the strip of the man and then the man took advantage of that and then end up entering enter into that man sexually and now that man struggles with his identity and who he is. And this is some of the ways that it happens. Same thing with a woman. She can say, well, what, what, make, what made my daughter decide to go gay? Why was she liking women? Well, maybe something happened, violated her. And so when she sees a woman, she sees herself what she wants to be. And sometimes this is the case, okay? And sometimes when you go through that, you're longing for it, see? And that goes on and on and on, okay? I'm just dealing with some things when you've been touched. And this is why we make, and don't think this is crazy and don't think this is ludicrous what I'm teaching because we say it all the time, but we say it like this, hurt people hurt people. Well, why does somebody hurt, hurt somebody else? Wouldn't it seem like that hurt people wouldn't hurt people because you know what being hurt feel like? Why are you doing what was done to you when you know what it feels like? Because there's something that caused you. I was watching, me and wife was watching the story on Netflix about Chris. Chris Brown and everybody talked about Chris Brown and I had my comments about Chris Brown and that girl and he was violent with but when he told his story about his dad and how much his dad beat his mom and beat his mom and beat his mom and how much fear he was in and how and his stepfather not his real father his stepfather and how he shot himself in the head didn't die but he went blind and then he constantly he constantly uh, uh, beat his mom more he said when he was fighting that young lady he knew that was not Chris Brown but he had became the very affliction, reflection uh, of his stepfather and he became what had raised him. The very fears that he had in his home, he now had that anger because when something, when you are raped and when you are violated, you are, some things are stolen, but some things are deposited. Okay, so when someone touch you, you can revert and all of a sudden you was touched by a woman and now you don't want to be with a man because really you want to be a woman. You want to get your virtue back, but you don't know how to get it back. And somebody takes advantage of what you're desiring and then leads you into other places and other behaviors. Okay, am I making sense to you? Okay, so we have to deal with who touched me. We have to deal with that I was touched and I got to deal with the pain. I got to deal with uh, maybe I put myself in the wrong place. And there's many times I end up in situations where I'm saying, how did I get here? Why am I questioning my identity? Why am I questioning? Why am I, why am I so radical? Even today I was to my wife, I, I, can't, I can't play with it. I got to be all the way right or all the way wrong. Why am I extremist? Why is so-called violence hard for me? Because I've been touched. Because I've been touched. So if you don't understand that and you don't understand it, and many women will never tell you, many men will never tell you, but this is relevant. And you better believe, I, out of, let's say I have 300 people that's watching me today. Well, I'm telling you, 150 of those 300 is probably have been touched. And I can even go higher. Out of 300 people that may be watching me today, probably 270 has been touched. But we don't talk about it. We don't express it. We don't really seek for healing. We have been trying. Traumatized. Maybe you like me psychologically, so you don't remember the actual moment, but it happened. But there is some signs in your behavior that you have been touched. Okay? So, it, so I want you, and this is what I want you to say. I want you to begin to say, Lord, wash me from every illegal touch. Whether it's my, whether it's my father too close, or sometimes men have a tendency, and they do this back in the, back in the day. God bless you, Captain Forrest. Sometimes we do this back in the day, and um, men would set young, young girls on their lap. I'm going to talk about all the things we couldn't do. But it happens. It happens in jail. It happens in prison. I've had friends that went to prison and came back, and they have been raped in prison. And they, have, they may have went to prison when they was 30 years old. They come out when they're 38. But they question their manhood because what they have been violated. 
I know young men who were, who, who were, I talked to my stepfather who struggled homeless, and he told me about the choir director that kind of influenced him. He told me about how he was raised with his three sisters and they were very beautiful. And when they would get dressed to go downstairs and they would put on gowns and shoes to, to, to show their mother how nice they look, he wanted, he wanted to look nice too. So he put on one of their dresses and go downstairs. And she probably didn't know how to handle her son coming down in a dress in the heel. He wanted to be appreciated. He wanted to be accepted. His, his father was an alcoholic. His father didn't know how to affirm him as a man. So sometimes young boys grow up in a culture around women all the time. And what happens is you create an environment that will help them accept people that may touch them. Because those are the only people that seem to understand me or that can embrace me. See, I'm talking to you. But we got to ask God to wash us from this illegal touch. And Lord, help me to come out of my secrets. One of the most hardest things to tell people, God, I feel the Lord. Yeah. Woo. Sometimes the hardest thing to tell people is what you've been through. Because if, if, my, if the identity that I want to tell you I have experienced will change what you see about me, I'm not giving up a false identity that is applause for a real identity that is condemned. I say it again. I'm not giving up a false identity that, that I get applause and people love me because I lie rather than tell the truth and they will condemn me and hate me. So some people never tell the secret. And I'm going to talk about how some daughters are afraid to say because daddy will kill him if he found this out. Mama will shoot them if they found this out. Or, or, or he will lose his whole entire ministry and, and he's helped out so many people and I would hate for his ministry to fall if people knew the truth. And this happens and we see in the news, you're seeing, you're seeing football players, you're seeing coaches, you're seeing senators, you're seeing all kind of people getting caught up in sexual abuse and now it's coming out that he touched me 10 years ago, he touched me and many children in our church, many of us, the reason why we shout so much and bless God so much and press on so much because we've been touched and we know that we don't go radical in praise, we can deal with the shame and the guilt, that's why we may be extreme in what we're doing because we have been touched all right okay next point i want to deal with i want you to begin to pray for all those who've been victimized we don't deal with issues of being touched we don't deal with it we cover it up we hide it nobody wants to talk about it at the family reunion we don't want to mention it and, it, and it's hurtful. So now you have a young girl that she decided she don't want to be with men, but you don't know how, you don't have any idea why. You you have a young man who decided he don't want to be with women, and you have no reason why. And you have people who are drinking themselves to death, or churching themselves to death, or working themselves to death, or they they so involved in their car, or they so involved. And the real reason why they have never been healed from being touched. We need prayer. I need somebody to pray. And I used to always say, who would love me for me if I told my real story? When I tell part of my story, people trip. I have people tell me, you got to quit telling it, man, because people are going to see you where you at. So it's rather for me to act like I didn't have an issue in my life and be in prison for your sake. And many people are in prison for the sake of others because others don't want to handle what they've been through. So I have to be in prison. I have to deal with it by myself. I have to be with it alone because you're not ready to handle my truth, but you sure want me to handle yours. Real talk. Because most people, we you don't have enough love to love people for really what they are. They have to be fake. They have to be cosmetic. They have to be religious. See? So I'm dealing with this where they need prayer and we got to pray and this is a long process and it takes healing and it takes love and it takes crying and it takes getting mad and it takes getting upset and it takes a lot of things. But I want to be free. Do you want to be free? Who touched me? And I'm going to deal with the who and I'm going to deal with the spirit behind this. Okay. I wanted to show this video, but 
I, I'm not able to show it, but there's a video that a young man, and, and he just came on. Good to see you, Lee. Lee, my friend Lee, he was on not too long ago. He showed me this video, and I'm telling you, this video made such an impact on my life. And in this video, I wish I could show it to you, but maybe I'll put it on my page. He did put it up on his page. But this, this, this video is about a dog who's in a corner, and the dog is hollering. I mean, the holler of the dog would touch your heart. I got pierced. I played it today right before I was coming on to see if, if y'all could see it. And my wife said that the, the, the screaming of the dog just should do something to me. The dog is hollering. I mean, screaming, screaming, hollering. But the woman that's in the room with the dog, she's petting the dog. She's petting the dog. She's loving the dog. The dog has been abused. And the dog has been abused to the point that it's screaming and hollering. And anybody that comes close to the dog makes the dog holler. Anybody who reaches out to try to touch the dog, the dog would almost try to bite him or, or scream and holler. And But this woman wanted to change the cycle of the consciousness of the dog. The, on, the dog, only thing the dog knew was, I am being abused. I don't know what love looked like. I don't know what a real touch looked like. So the woman knew that she had to continue to touch the dog to change the dog's mind about what he'd been through. Are you hearing me? And all while the dog is hollering, she kept... She, she kept touching him. She couldn't stop touching him. And you got to know how to retouch. I feel the Holy Ghost. You've been touched by something that abused you. Now you have to know what a touch with love, the real touch, what real fatherhood feels like, what real motherhood re feels like, what real brotherhood feels like. But we have to have people that can touch us while we're hollering, touch us while we're complaining, touch us while we're fighting, touch us while we're mad and angry, but touch us in the spirit of love. Now, a dog can sense fear. She had to have so much love for this dog because if he would have uh, sensed any type of fear, he'd probably have been more violent because he's already been abused. People who have been touched sexually, you got to love them. This is the real reason why we don't see people who have struggled with homosexuality and lesbian and sex offenders. We don't see them being delivered in church because they will smell the fear that, that we have. Of, we are afraid of homosexuals. We are afraid of lesbians. We don't love them. We hate the act that they do, but we may hate the act, but we made it personal. We hate them. Let's tell it like it is. When it last time you came to an altar call and we prayed for homosexuals? When the last time you came to the altar call and we prayed for lesbians? You don't care. You just want them to stop doing what they're doing in front of you. And because we don't have the right love, we'll never have the right touch to reverse the experience of the wrong touch. This dog is hollering, but she keeps petting the dog, and she keeps and she's determined. I'm gonna pet you until you stop hollering. I'm gonna love you until there's no more holler in you, until it transmits to you that this is not what you've been through before. This touch is illegal. It's legal. It's not illegal. It is a legal touch. What what makes it legal? Love makes the touch legal. Woo! And when you have an illegal touch, it's because it didn't come from love. So the woman had to keep doing it. Now the dog is turning his head, look like he's, he, he's trying to bite the woman. And the woman has the attitude, if he bite me, then so what he bite me. If he hollers so much that he holler, so what if he holler? I, I got to break the cycle of what he has experienced. Will never help people that's been touched when you don't love them enough. One of the major things, uh, there are many things in my marriage that God, you know, like a combination when you, when, when the, when the birth, when both vices are coming together, there's a click. There's a, well, there's certain things in your relationship that you should hear the click of the Holy Ghost. And, and I've heard many of those in my marriage. But one of the major clicks that I heard when I first met my wife, she said to me, Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. She said to me, there's nothing you can tell me that will make me change my mind. Oh, God. That's what she told me. Then she says, I need you to let me love you. People who've been abused, we got to be around people that's going to love us while we're hollering. Because you have to have more, you have to have more longevity with the touch than they had with the abuse. 
You have to be persistent. You have to be patient. You have to be consistent. I will love you. I will love you. And we haven't found people. Look, you show me somebody who got earrings all in their ears and tattoos all over their Bible, all over their body, and, she, and the woman comes in and her hair is shaven. Do you really love her? Because you don't know how times she's been touched or, or tied down or abused or paid or, or, or convinced. You know, these three pastors not too long ago uh, got convicted of having sex with this 14-year-old girl. Three pastors out of Ohio, and they passed this girl around. One pastor called another pastor and said, hey, you, if you pay her, she'll have sex with you. This is very common. I ain't telling you what I read. I'm telling you what I experienced. I've been there when women have been passed around in church. I've been, I've, I've went to churches and when they took me to my hotel room, they shut the door and said, we have never had a man of God come here that, that we didn't sleep with. And then they stopped. In other words, we didn't just see where you at. If you say, why well, start now? We'll have sex with you right now before you preach tonight. If you say no, then we'll leave. I've been there. And I'm not talking about once, twice, three, four, five. I'm talking about numerous after numerous after numerous. This is very common. Who trained these young girls to submit themselves to this place? Because they've been touched somewhere. See? And a lot of times when we see men together, those men have been together sexually. Some pastors only bring certain ministers because they're having some kind of sexual thing going on. Because they've been abused. Some women hang together in the choir and you say, oh, she's doing so good over the praise and worship team because she's sleep with three of the sopranos. See, this goes on. These sexual activities. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. And this is very common. So you got to have somebody that's going to love you, that's going to love you while you holler. This dog is hollering, it's hollering, it's been abused, but the woman keeps rubbing the dog. It keeps rubbing the dog. It keeps rubbing the dog until the hollering calms down. And then she keeps, keeps rubbing it until the dog becomes playful. Well, are you going to walk with people who's been sexually abused, who took 14 years to tell it, 20 years to tw tell it, 17 years to tell it? Do you have 17 more years to love them until they get it all out, until they get delivered? Because this is what it's going to need when you've been abused. When you've been abused, you don't trust nobody. When you've been abused, you become an introvert. Or you become an external, trying to prove you're not gay, trying to prove you're not that. So now you sleep with everybody. And these things happen from the touch. Who touched me? Who stole the virtue from you illegally? Okay? In this video, the dog is hollering and screaming, has been abused. But the woman, no, I, I, I can't train the dog until I love the dog. I can't, I can't teach the dog tricks. I got to give the dog love. And she pets him and pets him. Until he calms down, until he plays. Now, let me give you another point. If you would have been on the outside of that wall, on the outside of that wall, and you knew that that woman and that dog was in that room, and all you can hear is hollering from the dog, you would have swore that this woman is abusing the dog. There are people that are trying to love us but people on the outside, all they hear is she saying he ain't right. He saying she ain't right. All we hear is complaints and hollering and I don't trust church and I'm not going to church and, and no pastor's right and no man is right and all men is dogs and all women is, is emotional and we hear the hollering. But we don't see the application of love. We will accuse that woman of abuse. And there are men that are trying to love people. While wow, they're hollering, but we think they are abusing. Everybody is not your hater. Everybody is not trying to hurt you. So people on the outside that don't understand that love suffer all things may interpret a love situation as an abusive situation because all they hear is the dog hollering. That's all they hear. And if I wouldn't seen the video from the inside, I would have said, man, who's beating up that dog? If I would have knew that dog's lifestyle and I heard and I knew he was in that room, I would run in that room and I would beat that woman up and knock her down and say, what are you doing? This dog has been through enough. This dog don't need to go through no more. And all she was trying to do as a wife, all he was trying to do as a husband was to love you out of your fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. You cannot help people who's been touched if your love is not perfected. They got too much fear. 
It makes me be in a corner. Anything that looks like it. If you lift your hands, I swear you're going to smack me. I was so abused in so many areas that if you were strong, I, would, I was afraid of you because the women in my family, they strong. And when I say strong, I mean strong. They strong, they strong physically. They strong like men. They strong uh, emotionally. They strong, they'll cut you, shoot you, and think nothing of it and go to church and testify and say the Lord is good. Yes, he is. So I've seen this. I understand the abuse. And I was the dog that had been abused. And when you touch me, I holler. I love my I love my wife to life. Not to death, but to life. Because she kept touching me until I stopped hollering. You really want to help people who've been touched? And that's why I'm asking you, if you're listening and you know that God has given you that level of love, somebody's been touched. You'd be surprised if the wives have been raped by their own husbands. Yeah, just took it. Sexual abuse. Who can who can say he raped me? No is no. Real talk. Oh boy. So and I'm gonna stop there because I, I don't I don't want this to be I'm not trying to impress the 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 the, the intellect today. And I most, most I say <laughs> that's not me anyway, but I, I want you to digest that. I want to pray for all those who've been a victim. Now, let me say something to you. If you're listening today and you have never told no one, ask God and, 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 and those who are watching, go into prayer right now as I speak. If you're watching and you've never told nobody about that illegal touch, the uncle who touched you, and every time you go over, he touches you. If you never did it, we're praying that God... Send somebody your way. There may be somebody already in your vicinity that you don't even know that you can begin to talk. Some of us need counseling, professional counseling and spiritual counseling because who touched you? But you, you can't keep going through life with these secrets. Introvert. If you're a male, you're trying to prove your manhood. I'm not gay. What happened to me? I ain't going to tell nobody that man did it to me. I've been, and I'm just sharing some things. I've been in the company of, of so-called friends and they would get drunk. And I never, I never thought that there was any gay thing about them. But then when they start drinking, they begin to touch you in ways that you're like, is this dude drunk? What's wrong with this guy? Why is he touching me like that? I've been around people who would drink and, 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 and men, I'm talking about men now, and get in your face close enough to kiss you. And I would, I mean, back up, man. Because there's some things. Now, when, a, when a, another man walks up on another man and doesn't give him his space, that man's been touched. But he can't tell it, or he could, but he refused to. Pride, ego. But the drinking brings it out. See? So, and, 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 I, and I say this because um, you'd be surprised of why marriages didn't work. You'd be surprised why some people would never be able to... Uh, Embrace a hug. I'd be surprised at the kids that uh, would, would never tell you what really happened at the basketball game. What really happened. Uh, I was in, and, and I got some friends on now from Buffalo, New York. I was in Buffalo, New York one time, and uh, I, was, uh, I was in Niagara Falls, and uh, I was working at, uh, I think it was called Fleet Bank at that time, and um, I was going to a movie theater and I didn't even know what movie theater I walked into. Well, I must have walked into the wrong movie theater. And when I walked into... Oh, okay. So when I walked into the movie theater, um, a man walked in the bathroom and hit me on the butt. Now, that time I, I was crazy. And uh, I, I tried to almost kill this guy. In my mind, I was gone. Uh, but this is real talk. I remember, and, I, and I'm sharing some things. Uh, I remember um, um, when I was in Youngstown, and I, I told this story before, and it was a very uh, prominent musician. And But he was drinking. There's a lot of musicians who drink. And you'd be surprised. How do I feel the only? you was surprised. you say, well, what? Why are, they, why are they not living right? Why are these musicians not living right? Because somebody touched them somewhere. Now, I'm not saying everybody been touched. But do you know that that... Um, 
I think I think the rating now is between 60 to 80 percent of America has been in touch somewhere in their life illegally. You know how huge that is? 60 to 80 percent of America has been touched, whether you're male or whether you're female. You you know how 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 big and how strong pornography is on both sides and I'm going to talk about that one day too when you're watching pornography and you're watching a man having sex with a woman you're still watching a man and how the devil tries to desensitize you takes advantage of you because you have no business watching pornography and desensitize you to a man okay I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about I'm going I'm, I'm to I'm lay it out because God has released me to do it I'm going to share with you I, my stepfather was in my mother's life for seven years he struggled with homosexuality and probably longer than that and I thank God he's saved now and I don't know how he's living but he seems to be a loving God he's preaching and things like that but I was able to sit down with him and he shared with me so much about their struggles and how it happens and being in an entertainment field you meet some wonderful people who have some serious struggles and when they tell you this story this is not a excuse but until or I, I wouldn't say until but unless you have been touched you don't know how far this is and I'm going to show you how everything is not sexual some things can touch you that never penetrated you but it touched you as if you had been penetrated I'm going to show you in the Bible there's rape in the Bible Tamar, I told you, was rape. And, the, and, and, and her brother wanted to kill a guy for raping a sister. So I'm going to share with you these things, okay? But these things happen. But back to the story, this very prominent entertainer, uh, music mus musician, and he had been drinking, and he seen me at the store, and he walked to me close, and he said, man, you play so well, and you know, you know how they talk, and he got in my face, and it scared me half to death. But he had been touched. Now, now, now I didn't say this to to, to criticize people. I'm saying this because Robert Jenkins love you. My wife and she's going to come and pray. Cassandra Jenkins, she loves you. Let's let's get out of the secrets. You you may be 30, you may be 40, but what if you're 15 and you've been touched? What if you're 17 and you've been touched? What if your daughter has been touched twice by the neighbor that you asked to raise your daughter? While you're at school, you always get home late. So you have you ask them when your daughter comes home, can she stay with y'all for two hours? I get off at four, I'll be here by five. And your daughter gets out of school at 2 30, she gets there by three. So from three to five, you're with somebody, and your daughter has never told you. Because your daughter knows how hard you work, and your daughter knows you ain't got no other way of having a babysitter. And if she tells the truth, mama got another problem. So I'm just gonna live with it. Okay? So I'm gonna bring my wife on. She's 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 not gonna come on. You can't see her, but she she's gonna um she's gonna pray, and um, we're just gonna pray for that. And and make sure you're here tomorrow. We'll do a part two as well. And there's some other things going on, but I don't want to break the spirit. So I'll I'll you'll see my post in a minute because there's another teaching that I want you to be involved in. But I don't want to break the spirit. So we're praying for those who have been touched, and we're praying for those to come out of secret, and we're praying for those who God has caused you to walk with a person. You got to walk with them until you can walk them out of it. You have to do them like that dog. You have to keep petting them and keep loving them and keep encouraging them and keep powering them until they're no longer hollering. Are you willing to love them like that? Because that's the only thing that's going to help a person who's been abused to trust your to trust your words and trust your hand shaking and to trust your voice. Okay? I love you and my wife is going to come and we'll see you tomorrow. Go ahead, sweetheart. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we just bless you on today, Lord God. Father, we enter your gates with thanksgiving. And God, we come before your courts with praise, Lord God. And Father, we enter in through the blood of Jesus right now, God. And Lord, we just come to say thank you for your word on today, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for commissioning the Holy Spirit on today, God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for healing, Lord God, that is going to take place, God, that has taken place in the lives of your people, Lord God. Father, we thank you for lifting burdens on today, God. We thank you for transformation on today, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for restoring, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for erasing, Lord God, the very fingerprints on today, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, we just, Lord, come to just say thank you on today, God. Lord, we love you on today, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord, for giving them back their identity, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. We come to expose the enemy on today, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we come, Lord, Thanking you for forgiveness on today, God. Yes, in the name 
of Jesus, Lord, Amen. for turning every heart back to you, Lord God. Lord, for giving them, Lord God, a heart of forgiveness on today, God. Amen. For giving them a heart of deliverance on today, God. Yes, for giving them a heart of submission on today, God. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you, God. Bless Lord, you. we thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done on today, God, and all that you're going to do, God. We bless you for the for the upcoming testimonies, God. Yes, we Lord. thank you, Lord, for every good report, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, God, yes. we thank you, Lord, for exposing and shining the light on the enemy today, God. We thank you, Lord, God, for un uncleaving the tongues on today, God. Set them free to be able to talk about situations, Lord, God. Lord, let them forgive, Lord, God. Let them come before the throne of grace, Lord, to obtain your mercy on today, God. In the name of Jesus, God, Lord, let them know, God, that you were there, Lord, God. Let them know, God, that their, that their journey, God, shall be a testimony for somebody else on today, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, that you were there with them, God. Even through it, oh God, you were there, Lord, and we bless you, Lord, for keeping them alive on today, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord, that Lord, that we come to declare war on the enemy today, Lord, God. Let them know, God, that you have to let God's people go on today, God. That you have set them free on today, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. And Father, we bless you, God. Lord, we give you glory right now, God. Lord, we come against every mindset, Lord God. Every burden on today, God. Free them in the spirit of their yes. minds, Lord God. Yes. Give them a renewing of the mind on today, God. Yes. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Let them begin to cry out, Lord God. Yes. Begin to release the years of pain on today, God. Yes. In the name of Jesus, God. Let them know that it's already done, Lord. Because we declare and decree to be so on today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. And Lord, we bless you right now, God. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for giving them grace on today, God. For giving them mercy, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, God. And Lord, we bless you right now, God. We thank you right now, God, for opening doors, God. We thank you for giving them favor, Lord, as they begin to share and speak, Lord, God, that someone else will be delivered, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, not to point fingers, God, but to let, to help them out, oh God, in the name of Jesus, and God, we bless you right now, God. Hallelujah for having your way, Lord, God. We bless you right now for the Holy Spirit, God, beginning to fall fresh upon your people, Lord, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, and Lord, we bless you right now for doing it. Hallelujah, God. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for setting free, Lord God. We thank you right now, God, because you're God all by yourself on today, God. We bless Amen. you, Lord, for your anointing on today, God, that it shall fall fresh like never before, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah, God. Lord, we bless you right now, God. Lord, we thank you right now, God, for every home, Lord God. Begin to come to order in today, God. Amen. Lord, bless the marriages, God. Bless the secrets, Lord God. Lord, reveal. Lord God, that you are God on today, God. Lord, bind them together in love, oh God. Everything that the enemy has separated, God. Lord, we call your word to mend it back, Lord God. Close the gap on today, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God. And Lord, I lift up the man of God on today, God. I bless you for my husband, Lord God. I bless you for the transparency, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, God. Lord, I bless you for using him on today, God. I thank you right now for healing, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God. I thank you that it's purpose driven. Lord God, hallelujah to your name on today, God. And Lord, we thank you right now, God. We bless you right now, God. I thank you for hedging him on today, God. I thank you, Lord, for him walking, Lord God, in a divine purpose in which you have called him to do, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. And I bless you for a fresh anointing, God. Lord, I ask you to pour back, Lord God, all that he has given out on today, God. Lord, I thank you for doing it on today, God. I bless you for him, Lord. I lift him up to you on today, God. And I thank you for being the head of his life on today, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Lord, I thank you for the submission, God. I bless you for him on today, God. Ask you to give him strength on today, God. Give him endurance to continue, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. And we bless you for doing it, God. I thank you for healing on today, God. For healing your people, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, God. And Lord, we will give you all the glory, God. We give you praise on today, hallelujah, God. We bless you, Lord, because you're worthy on today, God. And for no other reason, and only because you're God, hallelujah, and you are due, God, that in which we give you on today in the name of Jesus, and Lord, we bless you, hallelujah, God, Lord, we usher your name, oh God, we thank you, God, hallelujah, for all that you have done in the lives of your people, Lord, yes. and God, we declare it that it is done on today, yes. God, yes. in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we bless you, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, for having your way on today, God. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless, you. Bless your name, God. Bless Thank you, Lord. You, Lord. You. Thank you, Lord, God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory Hallelujah, God. God. Thank you, Lord, that even as they begin to sleep on tonight, God, Lord, let their sleep be sweet on tonight, God. Yes, In the name of Jesus, Lord. Yes. Lord, give them a new song to sing, oh God. Give them new thoughts on tonight, God. Hallelujah. Yes, and God, Lord, I bless you, Lord. I give you all glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. God bless, bless your you. name, God. God bless you. Continue to thank pray. You, Lord. Pray for those who have been victimized. Name, We're praying for you if you have been victimized and yes, healing is God. here. Yes. Deliverance yes. is here. Yes. Love come to stay. Yes. And God says, <laughs> you'll get through this as well. I love you. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow, part two on Who Touched Me. Thanks for all those who come. If you get a chance at 7 o'clock, I'll be with James Summers with uh, the War Conference of Men, Men of War. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put the phone number up there. God bless you. I love you. And remember, there's nothing impossible for God, nothing too hard. I love you. See you tomorrow.